What's going on YouTube, 6-3 here. In this video, I'm going to show you the best 8 tips to get you started in Call of Duty Blackout. Tip number 1 is related to the first thing you actually do in a match, and that is jumping out of the heli. If you pick yourself a nice destination, jump out and head there looking up as far as possible to get the maximum distance. You'll see the slowest downward velocity you can achieve is 44 meters per second, which sounds great. And as you can see, you can travel a little over three and a half squares with this method. But what if there was a better way to do this? Instead, what you should be doing upon jumping from the heli is drop straight down, no matter where you want to land, until your downward velocity hits about 60 to 65 meters per second, and then level out flying as horizontal as possible. You'll notice now the slowest downward velocity you can achieve is 66 meters per second, but what the game doesn't show you is your horizontal velocity. Even though you are going down 50% faster, your hidden horizontal speed is greater than 50% what it is when you don't use this method. This is evidenced by the fact that you can go over 4.5 squares using this method. Maybe even more if I wasn't running into this mountain on the edge of the map and going out of bounds. Tip number two, your minimap. By default, the minimap is round and your position on it is fixed. When you turn, the minimap turns around you and with the fast movements you can make in this game, the minimap can really spin rapidly, making it unreadable. In addition, since we can have a compass on the top of our HUD to help call things out in a match, being able to tell directions with the minimap spinning can really be difficult. On PC it's under interface in general, and on console it's much easier to find since there are less options, but you'll want to change your minimap from round to square. Not only can you see more since the square minimap is slightly larger, but the map itself is fixed with north always pointing to the top, and your character arrow is the only thing that spins when you move. This is easier on the eyes, and much easier to orient yourself as to which way to turn when a direction is being given. Tip number 3, Trauma Kits. Trauma kits are a form of healing in COD Blackout and are special since you start a match with 150 health and only with a trauma kit can you increase your health beyond this to 200. When looting at the beginning of a match, always use a trauma kit as soon as you find it to not only give you the advantage in your next gunfight, but also clear up some inventory space early on. Any other healing will only bring up your health to a maximum of 150, so if you have a trauma kit, always use it first and then equip your med kits. Tip number four, loot boxes. Spawning randomly throughout the map are two different kinds of loot boxes. One is smaller with green stripes and usually has ammo and weapon attachments. And while I don't find these as often, it could just be because they are smaller and more easily missed. The other is a large green trunk and can have anything from level three armor to trauma kits to a rocket launcher. And if you see one of these, you definitely don't want to pass it up. Particularly, I've noticed that while there are quite a few spawns where there's a chance for loot boxes to appear, some spawns have a much more consistent spawn rate, which of course can change in the future. One spawn in particular is the tunnel underneath Fracking Tower. If you didn't know there was a tunnel, it's inside a small building on the north side of the monument and often has at least basic guns, armor, and meds throughout. Make sure you check all corners of the tunnel and room at the end as there's quite a bit of loose loot laying around. Inside the room on the right, there's almost always a large loot box as well, and if you want, there is a button down there which will open the hatch above and let you climb out. Tip number five, using your wingsuit mid-match. Your wingsuit obviously deploys as soon as you leave the heli at the beginning of the match, but if you didn't know, you can have it deployed in the middle of the match as well. You don't need to press anything to activate it, you just need to jump from a high enough location. It seems like you need to be at least three stories up for your character to open their wingsuit, anything less than that and you'll take fall damage when you land. It can be scary since there's no message in game that this is a feature, it's automatic if you're falling from a height that would otherwise probably kill you. Tip number six, the helicopter. No matter if you're playing as a solo or in a full squad, if you come across a helicopter in a match, it's almost always in your best interest to jump in and fly wherever it was that you were going. If you have the engineer perk as well, it's very easy to see if there's a helicopter nearby, so you don't have to do as much unnecessary running to check for a spawn. 
Not only is it simply safer to traverse the map above everyone else with a relatively low risk of being shot down, but you can choose to land in the most advantageous spot to not need to fight the circle later in the match. One strategy I've seen but don't particularly recommend is getting in a helicopter and just staying in the air until close to the end of the match. You can be shot out of the helicopter and the rocket launchers in this game do lock on and track vehicles, but otherwise you are usually out of most players range of fire or the risk of shooting at the helicopter and exposing themselves is greater than the reward of getting a single kill on the heli. Tip number seven, baiting other players. Simply put, airdrops attract players, and whether you think you're the first one there or you come late to the party, it's every individual player's responsibility to check their surroundings and make sure the coast is clear. Knowing this, if possible, you can loot the airdrop quickly, or you can take a tactical position so that when someone else does show up, you can loot both their body and the airdrop. With all the different guns and attachments in this game, looting can be overwhelming at first, but you never want to take too long playing with your loot, as there is never an easier kill than someone who isn't even shooting back while they stare at their inventory. Most times late in a game, killing other players is really just a refresh on ammo, grenades, meds, or perks, which can absolutely be the difference at the end of a match when players are forced to get close to each other. Tip number eight, your perks. Perks are quite commonly found, and for the vast majority of them, there's no time like the present to use them. In most situations, by the time you engage another player or team, there's no time to use perks which might otherwise give you an advantage in a firefight. Although when used, perks do still occupy a space in your inventory, perks should be used immediately upon being picked up, with a few exceptions, as you will almost always find more later in the match and can usually benefit from their use, especially being able to see equipment through walls after you've learned what the guns and equipment looks like to save you time. With occasional exception, you may get more benefit from holding onto both dead silence, so that you make much less noise, and awareness, so that you can hear enemy footsteps better. At the end of a match is when the vast majority of players will be within range to hear other footsteps or be heard, and with only a few more potential kills to get, having an advantage at this stage in the match cannot be understated. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and learned something, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and let me know in the comments below. See you next time.